Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be showing you how to build a PC in the Thermaltake Cirrus 350MX. If you see any parts you like you'll find links to everything in the description so let's make a start by taking a detailed look at the case. To remove our case's tempered glass panel there's two captive thumb screws at the back which we're going to need to loosen and then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards and lift away. To remove our other side panel this time we've got three captive thumb screws that we need to remove and then we're going to be able to pull the panel backwards and lift away. Taking a look at the back of this panel we've got a magnetic attached dust filter down at the bottom. Taking a look at our top IO we've got a power button, a single USB type C, two USB type A ports, separate headphone and microphone jacks and a reset button. We've got a magnetic attached dust filter on the top of the case and it can simply be lifted away. And it's good to see on the bottom of the case we've got another full length dust filter and it can be simply pulled out from the front for cleaning. Taking a look at our case's front panel, we do have this tempered glass panel but there is large cutouts on both sides. So we shouldn't have any problem with our flow. Although if you do prefer in the case accessory box we do have this steel front panel with large perforations on it which should give even better air flow. Our front panel simply pulls off from the bottom. It's great to see behind this we've got a full length dust filter to remove it you simply tilt it out from the top it's magnetically attached at the top and then you're going to be able to lift it up and away. So you'll see Thermaltake have installed two 140mm PWM ARGB fans at the front of the case although if you prefer you can mount up to three 120mm fans or up to a 360 or 280mm radiator at the front. These fans are installed on a removable fan stroke radiator bracket that's simply held on with four screws. Once you've got the four screws removed you simply need to lift the bracket up to free it and then you're going to be able to remove it from the case. Obviously our two front case fans are managed at the back and to remove it you would need to free these cables up. So the tempered glass part of the front panel is held on with four screws, two at the top and two at the bottom. And then we can replace the panel on top of the mesh panel. Make sure you have the side marked top towards the top of the front panel and then we just need to replace the screws. And that's what the case looks like with the mesh front panel in place. The fan support at the top of the case is exactly the same as the front, up to three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans, but this time the radiator support is a little bit reduced. You're only able to fit up to a 240 or 280 millimeter radiator at the top. At the rear of the case, we've got another 140 millimeter PWM fan pre-installed. Unlike the front, it doesn't have any ARGB on it, and if you prefer, it is also possible to mount a 120 millimeter fan or radiator at the rear. I'll go ahead and remove our case accessory box. So this is everything that comes in our case accessory box. So we've got loads of cable ties. We've got a cable extension for our rear fan. We've got a speaker. We've got some standoffs if you want to install your graphics card vertically. You attach your riser cable to these at the bottom of the case. And we've got all our screws in a single bag. In terms of motherboard support, the case support motherboards up to EATX in size. And you can see we do have additional cutouts around the motherboard for back connector ATX motherboards. Great to see we've got rubber grommets over to the right hand side of the motherboard and if you want to go with a CPR cutter the maximum height supported is 185 millimeters. At the rear of the case we've got seven horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and the maximum length for graphics card support is up to 360 millimeters. If you want to mount your graphics card in the vertical position you'll be pleased to hear that this bracket is rotatable. First thing to do is to remove the little cover and then there's four screws holding the bracket in place. Then with the screws removed all you need to do is pull the bracket forwards. That's going to free it up. You can simply rotate it round and we've got little notches here and here. So you just need to line the bracket up with these and then it's going to slot down and then you can replace the four screws and replace the cover. If we take a look down the bottom of the case we've got three different positions we can secure our riser cable. In the case accessory bag we get these long standoffs. I'll screw them into the middle position. And then you would simply need to secure a riser cable to the standoffs and it is important to mention the riser cable you would need to mount your graphics card vertically isn't included. We've got another removable panel down at the bottom. It's again held on with two thumb screws at the back. Once these are loosened we can pull the panel backwards to remove it. And if we take a look at the back of this panel again we've got another magnetically attached dust filter over the perforations. The reason you might want to remove this panel is to allow you to remove this panel. In the case accessory box we get this optional panel and you're going to install it here if you want to go with the optional LCD screen. To swap the panel we're going to need to remove two screws at the top and then all you would need to do is lift the panel upwards and out to remove it and then we can slide in the optional panel. Then all you need to do is replace the two screws at the top and the other panel and you can see here you've got two screw holes here for securing your LCD screen. Moving into the rear of the case you can see we've got our cutouts for our back connector motherboards as well as the two rubber grommets here. 
We've got some Velcro cable scraps securing our color match cables, which is nice to see. And it's great to see that our front panel connectors are organized into a single cable. And as well, we do have plenty of other cable tie down points. Cable routing space looks to be pretty good, but you would expect this given the case supports back connector motherboards. In terms of drive mounting, we've got three removable drive trays. These two towards the front will each support a two and a half inch drive, while the one behind the motherboard will support either a three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive. To remove the drive trays, there's a thumb screw we're gonna to need to loosen. And that's then gonna allow us to tilt our drive tray out and remove it from the case. So all you can do is line the drive up with the holes in the drive tray, and then you can simply screw it in from the back using the screws from the case accessory bag. And you'll see it is gonna be compatible with both two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives. Your power supply is gonna go down at the bottom of the case, and the case supports full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 220 millimeters. Although, as you can see, there's no hard drive cage at the bottom, so you've got absolutely loads of space at the bottom for your power supply and associated cables. Thermal take don't mention in the specs, but if we look towards the front of the case, you see there is these large cutouts, and it does look like it would be possible to mount the fan down at the bottom. So it does seem a little bit strange that Thermaltake don't seem to mention this in the case specs, but certainly an option you can do if you wish. To open your CPU socket, we're going to need to push this lever down and out to bring it all the way to the centre of the motherboard, and then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then lower our CPU down into the socket, making sure we've got the text the correct way around. And once we're happy at sitting correctly in the socket, we can go ahead and close the socket cover down. And then if we close the lever, the black bit of plastic should pop off, and we'll put it in our motherboard box for safekeeping. We're going to be installing our M.2 SSD in the top slot, so we can go ahead and remove the heatsink. We can then insert our drive into the slot. And if we go ahead and flatten it down, you'll notice that the same screw that holds our heatsink in place is going to secure our drive in place. If we're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection in the back of the heatsink we're going to need to remove, and then we can replace the heatsink. We're going to be installing our RAM in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU, so I'll open the clips on these slots. Then we can take our RAM, lower it down into the slot, and once we're happy, everything's sitting correct with some firm pressure, and it's going to clip into place. Next, we can set our motherboard into the case, lining it up the standoffs at the back. You'll notice that once the middle standoff goes through the middle hole, it's going to help hold our motherboard in place. Then we can secure the motherboard to the case using the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory bag. Next, we're going to want to get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard. So we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. Two headers along is an ARGB header, so we'll bring the ARGB cable coming from our front case fans through and get it plugged in. Another two headers along, we've got a system fan header, so we'll bring the PWM cable coming from our front fans through and get it plugged into place. We can plug the PWM extension cable that came in our case accessory bag into the rear fan. And we've got another system fan header down at the bottom of the motherboard to plug it into. Our front panel connector is going to go into this header down the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. So we can bring it through the cutout and we're going to plug it in with the front panel text facing up the way. Then we've got our USB 3.0 cable which is going to go into this header here. So we'll bring it through the cutout, line it up with the header and push it into place. And just below that, we've got our front panel type C. So again, we'll bring the cable through the rubber grommet, line it up, and push into place. Next, we've got our power supply to install. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the cables we're going to need. So I plugged in our 12 volt high power cable to power a graphics card, our 24 pin motherboard cable, and two 8 pin EPS cables to provide additional power to our CPU. Importantly, this is our power supply's intake fan. So we're going to want to install it facing down the way where we can get cool air from underneath the case. And then we can use four of the large power supply screws to secure the power supply to the case. One nice feature our power supply has is a smart zero fan mode. So whenever the power supply is under low load, the fan will stop spinning and helping reduce noise in the build. So that's something I definitely want to turn on. So our two 8 pin EPS cables are gonna go into these headers at the top left of the motherboard. So we'll bring them through the cutout at the top, line them up with the motherboard and push into place. And then we can just pull the excess cable through to the back. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here, so we'll bring it through the rubber grommet, line it up with the header, and push into place. And again, we'll just pull all the excess cable through to the back. We're now ready to start working our I.O. and if we turn our fans around, you'll see that Thermaltake have added gold contacts and pins to their fans, so they're going to join together without any cables. Even better, they're actually going to magnetically attach, so all we're going to need to do is join our fans together, and they're going to clip into place. Our fan cables are also going to connect magnetically. All we need to do is join it up 
and it's going to clip into place. Coming from the ends of the fans, we've got a PWM cable and also a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB cable. And we just need to plug these into headers on our motherboard. And we've also got an ARGB splitter cable if we want to add an additional device into it. We can then set our fans onto the radiator and we'll secure them into place using the eight included long radiator screws. Next, we're going to need to assemble our AMD bracket and install it on our pump. So all we're going to want to do is take this little bit off the bracket, pop it through here, and we're going to take a thumb screw and screw it on to the top. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll pop the bracket into place and we'll put a thumb screw loosely on top. And then all we need to do is slide this onto our pump. In terms of the cables coming from our pump, we've got a four pin PWM cable, which we're going to plug into our CPU pump header. And you'll notice on the side of the pump, we've got a connector here. And this is for our USB cable. It's going to plug into here. And the other end, we're going to plug into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard. We can set our I.O. into place at the top of the case. And we'll secure it into place using the short radiator screws. And we can then replace the dust filter at the top. I'm just going to pass the cables coming from the fans in the radiator through to the back. We've got two fan headers at the top of the motherboard. The one furthest to the left is our CPU fan header, and that's the one we're going to want to plug the cable coming from the fans into. And we've got an RGB header at the top right of the motherboard, so we'll get the RGB cable plugged into here. Next, we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. We can remove the plastic protection from the cold plate. And one thing I like to do is just wrap the PWM cable round the bracket to help go up and exit towards the top of the motherboard. Then we just need to get the clips over the brackets on the motherboard. So we'll get the top one on first of all, and then try and get the bottom one on. And that's the bottom one on. And then all we need to do is tighten each of the thumb screws in turn. Our pump header is right next to our CPU fan header. So we'll get the cable plugged in, and then we can pull all the excess cable through to the back. I'm just gonna pass our USB cable through from the back and we'll plug it into the USB header on the top of our pump. We've got two USB 2.0 headers down the bottom of the motherboard, so we'll get our USB cable plugged into one of those. And we've got some plastic protection on the pump that we can remove. Next, we've got our graphics card to install, so we're gonna need to remove the second and third expansion slot bracket from the top. And then we can open the clip in the top PCIe slot on the motherboard. Next, we're gonna start our graphics card into the case and line it up with the motherboard. And once we're happy, everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card and it is going to clip into place. We can secure it into place with the two thumb screws we've just removed, and then we can replace the cover at the side. We can then bring our 12 volt high power cable through the cutout at the bottom, line it up with our graphics card, and push into place. And then we'll just tuck the excess cable through to the back. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management to get our panels back on again. Okay, so that's the build complete and looking absolutely amazing. If you don't know how to install Windows, the drivers, set the RGB software up, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS, and just all the BIOS settings, I have made videos that cover all of that, and I'll put links to those videos in the description. I've also made a guide to setting up a very similar thermal take IO with also a screen on it. So I'll put a link to that video because the process for setting this one up and that one is exactly the same. What I want to do now is take a look at the temperatures. So our Ryzen 7 7800X 3D idled at 39 degrees and reached a maximum of 69 degrees during a 10 minute idle to 64 stability test. The Aorus Master RTX 4070 idled at 28 degrees and reached a maximum of 51 degrees during the stability test. We had average noise levels of 35 decibels at idle and 46 decibels under load. So in terms of building in the case, everything was pretty good apart from in one area, and that was there was quite limited space at the top, particularly once you installed your AIO. I did struggle to plug in the CPU fan and pump header. Um, that was difficult once the AIO was installed. So my advice would be try and plug in as many cables as you can at the top before you would install an AIO. So in terms of my thoughts on the case itself, as you'd expect coming from Thermaltake, the build quality is really good throughout. Nice to see that we've got good quality PWM fans included. The two front ones have an ARGB on them. 
It's nice that you've got that changeable front panel and also the option to add an LCD screen on the side of the case if you want. Good rubber grommets, support for back connector motherboards, um, as well as this rotatable PCI expansion slot bracket, allowing you to install your graphics card vertically in a good position back from the tempered glass panel if you want to do that. And in terms of cable management at the back, everything was pretty good there as well. Um, MSRP for this case is around about £105 in the UK, and I think for what you're getting, it is pretty good value for money. Really the only additional thing I would like to have seen at this point would have been the rear case fan to have ARGB on it as well. But other than that, Thermaltake have done a great job of this case and I'd be very happy with it sitting on my desk. So hopefully you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step PC build guide. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.